Hey everyone, it's Kathy Cronin from Broken Roads, and I'm here for Amy Howard at home today, getting ready to transform this credenza piece into something a little bit more updated and definitely a little bit brighter than it looks right now. Um, it does have a textured feel to it, so it's going to be uh, fun to use crack patina on, which I love that uh, product, and it's kind of messy, which is really something up my alley, so it'll be fun to do and show you how to do it. Um, obviously, we're going to start with the clean slate, clean the whole piece down. It's super dusty, really messy right now. Get all the oils and the dirt and um, all the waxes. If there's anything like that on there, we'll get all that off and have it prepped and ready for paint. And the paint today I think I'm going to use is going to be the Lakai Blue. And I think on top of the Lakai, I'm talking maybe just a little bit, maybe a 20 to 25 percent of a dry brush of Vintage Affliction, which is kind of a little bit lighter color in the blue, and just add that as a highlight. I also want to um, add into it the cracked patina on top of that with more paint. And I'm going to pull it with my hands for the most part. And when that dries, of course, and we do all the sanding and the processing on that, um, adding a little bit more paint. When it's finished, we're going to add matte sealer and then finish off with my mineral beeswax. So it'll be a fun project. I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. And here we go. First step is clean slate. We want to make sure this is properly prepped and ready to go so that the paint will adhere nicely to your piece. I really only have to take just a little bit. I count usually one, two, maybe one, two, three. Put this on a clean cloth and then you just run it over your piece, pulling off all of the dirt, the waxes, the oils, and then turning it frequently just so that you can make sure you're not reapplying those same dirt, waxes, and oils onto your piece. Once you have this thoroughly clean, the really great thing about this product is that you don't have to rinse it off. You don't have to wipe it off. So let it dry about 10 minutes and then it will be ready for paint. For the sake of time, I went ahead and finished cleaning this piece with the clean slate. It sat about 10 minutes and now it's ready to go with one step paint. I have selected both the one and a half and two and a half inch chip brushes from Amy to use on this piece for the actual paint itself. And the reason why is because the finish is really rough. Because it is so rough, I actually think that these will work a little bit better getting into all the cracks and crevices than the nylon brush will for me. And so I'm going to go ahead and use these two brushes. Paint's been stirred, and we'll get started. And just remember with one step paint, a, a thin coat, you want to do at least two coats, normally speaking. Uh, one thin one each time, let it dry about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depends on the humidity in your area and then you can apply the second coat. And it goes on super well. Lakai is a great color for coverage. I love this. It's already feeling better. I mean, one brush stroke, and I can already see that this is going to be amazing when it's finished. The color is brighter, more interesting, uh, and it will really make those relieved areas, that sort of textured area pop when we're done um, adding all of the other applications to it. I now have two coats of one step paint in Lakai Blue on this piece. It's ready to go for the cracked patina. I've decided to just place it on the insets of the drawers and the doors. That way I'm only accenting certain areas with it because I'm going to use a different color of one step paint over the cracked patina when I go to finish it out. Uh, we always talk about how cracked patina is like the middle of the Oreo cookie. So you have one step paint, you've got your cracked patina, and then another coat of paint on top of that. So I'm just going to show you right now how to mix it up, and then when I get ready to apply it, we'll do a close-up of that, uh, that process. So cracked patina is a little bit syrupy, and it looks kind of like, like pancake syrup. 
just a little bit like that. So I'm just going to use very little, putting it into this cup right here. And I would say I'm probably using about two tablespoons, not a lot. And then I'm going to add water to it. And the water um, really is just to thin it out because I don't need a lot of cracks on this piece. This piece is already uh, very uneven surfaced. It has a lot, a lot of depth to it anyway. The finish is very unlevel. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it and then mix it up. So it's more like a, a thin, thinner syrup at this point. see this very well but it's just like a little drip like that okay we are getting ready to apply it and I'll use Amy's one and a half inch brush here we go Okay, as I said, we're only going to use it on the insets of the drawers and the doors. I suppose to these little inner areas that are actually not a drawer or a door, we'll also consistently use it on them as well. Um, so we just put a little bit on our brush, like this. And then I'm going to run it across this piece, just on the inset. And crack patina takes a couple of hours to actually dry. It will be shiny when it's dry. It looks like it's wet, but it won't be wet. And then when you add your next coat of one-step paint to the top of it, that's when the magic starts. That will be fun to see. So I'm just going to go over and cover a thin layer of this on every inset. Let it dry. We'll come back and do the next coat of paint. The cracked patina has now set for a couple of hours and I'm getting ready to add on my next layer of paint. It's the One Step Paint in Vintage Affliction a little bit lighter than the actual piece itself. And I do think that by the time I'm finished with this, I'll probably end up adding a glaze over the top of the whole thing just to blend the two colors together really well for a nice finish. So I have some paint all ready to go. And basically taking the one and a half inch chip brush and just adding it carefully to these pieces where I actually applied the cracked patina. And as it uh, works into this Piece, it will start to break and crack in certain areas. If you put your brush on it too much, you'll start pulling the paint off. And I earlier said I was going to use my hands for this, but I think after looking at this and how, how detailed it is already, I probably don't need to do a whole lot of that, so I may just use the brush, at least right now, I think. So I'm just taking the brush and I'm just going to pull a little bit like this, just stippling it almost. And then I'll go back over these sections where I've painted outside, colored outside the lines, painted outside my lines right here, and, uh, and make it a little bit cleaner before I do any glazing over it. So I'm just going to do it like this in each one of the sections. And I put the paint specifically into a separate container because when you have the cracked patina on here and you're dipping your brush back into the paint and onto the cracked patina, it can get a little messy and I don't want the cracked patina in my actual can. So this is how we do it and we'll get this finished, let it dry and on to the next step. I've now applied the Vintage Affliction to the insets over the cracked patina on the drawers and the doors. And it looks really good. I'm excited about this finish. 
I am getting ready to do a glaze on it. I hadn't planned on doing that. I talked about it a little bit earlier. I think sometimes these pieces have a mind of their own and you just kind of got to go with it. So in this particular situation, what I've decided to do is something a little bit different other than uh, one, 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 which would be one part glazed over, one part gel stain, one part water. I'm mixing it up a little bit. I'm going to use one part gel stain, one part water, and then one half parts each of two different gel stain colors. This one I've mixed together Kensington Black and then English Walnut. I really uh, like these two mixed together, kind of gives like a deep, rich feel to the brown that goes over this base and it's going to match this top really well. And the thing about this top, I actually applied the clean slate to it and it turned out really nice. It, it has just a couple little dings that I need to touch up, but other than that, it's in beautiful shape. So. I'm not going to mess with a good thing. I think it's wonderful and it'll be a nice compliment to the finished base. So we're just going to leave it alone for now. So to get started, everything's been mixed up. I'm going to use Amy's two and a half inch chip brush and apply this. And I'm also going to dab it off with a clean, dry, lint-free cloth. So I'll show some close-ups as I go through this process. And let's get started. Here we are. We're going to start this glazing process. And I put just a little bit of it on my two and a half inch chip brush and then we just take it and run it across the finished paint piece. The water um, helps to give it a little bit of thinness so it's easier to maneuver. A little more glazed over gives it a little bit more time, open time before it, it actually dries. So I'm just kind of punching this on there. There's no particular way on this on this piece because it is so uh, rough of a finish. And then I'm going to take clean, dry, lint-free rag and run it across here. This is really where you kind of have to take a step back sometimes and just look at it and see if you need to pull a little more off. Uh, if you need to add a little more in certain places, I, I like doing that, you know, stepping back a little bit to see what the, the overall picture looks like, kind of even it out. And it's really nice. This is set into the cracks really well. All the details are starting to pull out. It kind of gives it an old world feel. It'll be uh, really lovely when it's done. You'll see all this glaze setting into these little crevices and really adding some depth. So I like that a lot. Next up, Matt Sealer. The entire piece now has been covered with the glaze that I made earlier. It's been allowed to dry at least a couple of hours. And we're getting ready to apply the matte sealer with a one and a half inch nylon brush. I'm going to let that dry a couple hours just to be safe. And then on to the next step. Hey, y'all, we're about finished here. Last thing we need to do is put Mind Your Own Beeswax on the entire piece. It will uh, dry over a couple hours time is normally what people like to have until it gets tacky and then you can buff it. I prefer to wait overnight. That's just my preference. Everybody has their own way of doing things. And the best thing about this is it's very simple to apply. It smells really good. I'm just going to add a little piece, a little bit of it to a piece of cardboard like this. And then run your brush into the wax. Get it nice and full and then offload onto the cardboard and then run it across your piece. And it just, just takes a light hand, nothing real heavy. And again, it'll dry in a couple of hours. It'll come to tack. Uh, the reason I wait overnight, for me, it's uh, easier to buff. That's why I wait. All right, I've allowed the piece to set overnight and we are ready to buff. There are two ways that you can do that. One of them is to just use a clean, lint-free, dry rag. The other one is to use 4 ot or 0 steel wool. Either one will work. Sometimes I use them in tandem. Just depends on what kind of look you're going for. And I sometimes find the steel wool is a little bit easier to work with, especially on darker colors. So it's really just a preference. 
your own preference, what you'd like to do. And you just want to run your lint-free rag or your steel wool across the piece and just give it a nice little, little buff, a little shine. It starts right up. It's pretty easy to see almost immediately. And then you just do this across the whole piece and it'll be set for hardware. We're finished. The piece has been buffed lightly now. It looks great. Add it on the original drop hardware like I spoke of earlier. And then just some new knobs to this with some back plates to kind of give it a little bit fuller look on the top. I think it's wonderful. Uh, has a nice sheen to it. And again, I didn't have to do anything to the top. Just clean slate and then just a little bit of touch up here and there in a couple of spots where there might have been a scratch or two, but super, super slight. So this is just a wonderful example of transforming something that had a lot of print on it. I mean, it looked completely different. Remember that brown with all of the tan and brown printed flowers? This color is a great coverage color, the Lakai Blue. Just love that one step color. Well, I can't wait to see it in a new home. Thanks so much for joining me today. Y'all have a great week.